Wake up, Christians. This is Real Talk Ministry, and I will be sharing special podcast episodes called Wake Up, Christians. When you hear this sound, then you know it's time to wake up as I sound the alarm on helping the church see church in a way that may be different than what we are used to. So wake up, Christians, and I am your host, Miss Nisi. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Miss Nisi, and there has been much conversation down through the years, and it will continue to be had, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure it will continue for years to come. But today, I will be talking about Wake Up Christians, R&B music, or gospel music. What's the difference? Now, before we get started, I know as Christians, we have a lot of mixed emotions in regards to R&B music and gospel music and how they interchange with each other. Uh, I will give you my definition of what I feel gospel music is or what I think it should be. Um, But for many of us, you probably feel the same way. We feel that the gospel music should have some kind of connection to how we're living for Christ, uh, the joy it gives, how it gives praise and how it gives worship and honor to God. Um, Listening to gospel music, I'm telling you now, I'm I'm guaranteed to probably be 100% biased, not purposely. But I grew up listening to gospel music. I had the teachings of what gospel music was supposed to be. So I'm not trying to lean to make a decision to say, oh, yes, gospel music is and R&B music isn't. Uh, I'm just saying, like, my opinions that are being expressed is because I grew up to listen to gospel music and therefore I love it. I love the spiritual connection you can get from it. I love how... The music can bring joy in a time of sadness and it it brings praise and worship. So yes, I love gospel music. But in this edition or this episode of Wake Up Christian, R&B or gospel music, what's the difference? I am going to share my thoughts and there are going to be some names that I'm going to share, but I want to forewarn you now uh, with my disclaimer that I'm putting out there. There is no judgment on these people. There is nothing that I'm really saying bad about them. Just using them in reference into gospel music today. Um, I listen to these gospel artists today that I mentioned in this uh, episode. And you can also listen to them on my Real Talk Ministry radio. You can go to my website, realtalkministry.com. Or you can Google Real Talk Ministry Radio 365 Live. So that's gospel music 24-7, has some preaching, all that good stuff. So now that I got my own little plug out the way, let me share what even brought this on. Uh, I was over at my daughter's house and I was listening to my gospel music on my phone. And my older daughter was listening to me. So there was a particular song I didn't want to hear. And I asked her, did she want to listen to it? And she was kind of like, at the moment, like, yeah, it didn't matter. Only to have a conversation a couple of days later with me and uh, both of my daughters together. And my oldest daughter was like, mama was listening to gospel music. And she was going, she asked me, was it okay that she listened to this R&B music while listening to gospel? And I was like, I don't care. And I was like, no, wait a minute. That wasn't R&B music. That was actually gospel. And she was like, nah, and she was searching through her, her, no, her music set. And she was like, no, I know who that is. And that's not, and I'm like, long story short on this. It was very clear that this same gospel artist was gospel for me because I knew she was a gospel artist, but it definitely wasn't gospel to my daughters and how they interpret what she was saying and how the song went. So on my way to work one day, I decided to pull up this song again and just listen to it. And I thought, wow, there is nothing new under the sun when it comes to gospel songs, leaving out God, Jesus, Elohim, Almighty. Um, It's definitely nothing new under the sun to hear a gospel song that does not have a reference to Jesus Christ at all in their songs, even though that's who they're talking about. And it, it was very easy to see how if my daughters didn't know that she was a gospel artist and putting the connections together, how they felt like she was just singing a love song to a man because looking at it from their point of view, I would have thought the same thing. And <clears throat> I know they're called inspirational and there's now Christian and hip hop 
And there's so many gospel genres out there, but um, acknowledging that situation is what sparked this wake up Christian. And I thought to myself, isn't it becoming now too common that we're leaving Jesus and God and who we are really referencing, who the gospel artists are really referencing in their songs and is it moving true gospel further and further away from what we call gospel music? Now I'm gonna do some little throwback conversations. So when Kirk Franklin came out with Stomp, so y'all know that's pretty far back. Um, I was raised in the church. So when he kept saying, I'm doing this for the young people, no, I wasn't a child <laughs> at the time I wasn't. But I didn't understand why we needed music for the young people. I can only speak on myself on this. But I love music like Shirley Caesar. I love listening to Rance Allen and the Winans. I mean, uh, back then I was like John P. Key, Commission, Fred Hammond, even Kirk himself, they was they were holding it down. Uh, I didn't understand why there was a certain sound that was needed for young people to the point you had to mix R and B music in it for Jesus for young people to accept Jesus or gospel music in the name of Jesus. But Kirk said he was doing it to reach the young people. And of course, he wasn't the first to do it. He wasn't the first to try to do that. I just feel like from my point of view, from my point of view, it stuck. Um, it definitely solidified this trend and it pushed boundaries. He got a lot of pushback from it, but um, it also put in a new spin, a new sound on what gospel is today. And it is evident that old and young people alike, they love this type of music, this new style of music nowadays, but it doesn't seem that this music is really reaching anyone spiritually anymore. And the hype of gospel music is now more about how many fans you can get as opposed to how many souls you can reach. Because nowadays fans equals dollars. So it looks like the push of gospel music to me is being pushed more for the hype and not the souls. Because initially it was for the young people. And I don't think the gospel sound, I'm not talking about a person, I'm talking about the sound, is it, now to me, it's coming across as people thinking it's old school. Like that's an old school sound, traditional, that's what they call it. Like it's not what the gospel sound is today. And it's not popular. And um, when it's not popular, it's not something the world wants to hear. I feel like some of the gospel artists are conforming to that. And the sounds that they're conforming to doesn't mean that it has to sound like Mahalia Jackson or Shirley Caesar from the 80s and the 90s or whatever is considered old school to you. Um, but it definitely should be a distinction, a distinction to let me know that if you're actually singing a song to Jesus, I should feel and understand that that song is to Jesus. Now the song that my daughters and I share the light, I never listened to that to be like, oh, this song is talking about the Lord. I'm used to songs that are supposed to be gospel that never mention Jesus. So it was to me just a song. It was just the fact that they just knew from the bottom of their heart that that couldn't possibly be a gospel song. And listening to it, I agree. So I would say um, that it's very clear that there isn't much of a difference in gospel music and R&B music today. Uh, I don't understand how gospel music is so old um, or old school, but you would take gospel music that you want to make new age for people to listen to today by going back and pulling 70 and 80 R&B music to add to it. Music is music, and if it's popular, people gonna wanna move to it, they gonna wanna dance to it. But I always felt, and I could be showing my age, uh, that gospel music is supposed to be relatable to you in the form of Christ. When I say in the form of Christ, I mean there's a direct connection. When I listen to gospel music, my thoughts should be of God. And for too long, we have been using this excuse that this transition of music is for the young people. And it's because, you know, for those like me who grew up or who followed the scriptures that wants to keep a spiritual song in their heart, we don't think listening to a gospel song from an R&B person is legit. Sad, but true. 
we think that if they're doing R&B and they sinning and they um, not living a full, complete life for Christ, then they are just singing a gospel song and it really don't have any meaning. Sad, but true. But we are very contradiction. We're a contradiction to that because we can know a gospel artist doing the same thing, but because they claim Christ more than the R&B R &B gospel singer do, it's accepted. But I'm not going to go into that. That's a whole nother conversation and I don't have the time to discuss. But for too long, we have been using this excuse that it's for the young people or because, you know, changing the words around. I feel like it just, it's another way of getting around doing what we're really supposed to be doing or as gospel artists should be singing or the way you should be singing. It's almost like a manipulation of, even though gospel said, even though God said in the word of God, plenty of times to keep a gospel song, keep a gospel hymn or uh, Psalms in your heart, you know, uh, <laughs> it's like, okay, but if I do it this way and make a gospel, even though it's worldly or it's blues, and let me tell you what blues mean, cause you're gonna hear me say that. I might slip and say that a couple of times. Growing up blues, wasn't Coltrane and B.B. King in our house. When they said, I don't want you listening to the blues, that meant jazz, country, pop, rock, rap, anything that wasn't gospel, it covered it. <laughs> it covered it all. So if I slip and say that, that's why I'm not talking about B.B. King. I'm talking about anything that's not gospel because that's how I heard it growing up. So um, when we talk about popularity, in the music that is being played in the world that we have to take it from the world now and put it as a gospel so we can enjoy it in the sight of saying this is for god i think that's a little manipulation that we're trying to the artists are trying to cut corners to really sing r b but putting the spin on it and that's if they cut corners that way we accepted it we accepted it for a long time because honestly in our hearts if you're not choosing to listen to r b you know you really want to sing it so that's your way of getting around singing the songs that you really want to sing which in actuality does not fix the problem it still makes gospel music more like r b than gospel um i'm going to share this story of when what i went through when i came became committed to god and i mean when i got saved and i was like no i'm gonna let the holy ghost really work for my life i'm not gonna play games with it i was told that anything of the world had to go so that include any music that was not a God. And that was hard for me because I love rap. I love rap music, not this new type stuff. I don't know what that is. I'm not gonna try to explain it because I don't know how. But rap music, like I was um, I'm about to show my age. So I'm like Tupac Biggie, <laughs> it's like Queen Latifah because you know I had to listen to the female rappers. Uh, DJ Quick, Bone Thugs, I love all of them. But I was like, I can't listen to them and stay safe because that's what I was taught. Uh, I learned later that I could, but I won't go into that either. It's going to be a lot of stuff I'm not going to go into because this is really, again, vast. It's really big, a lot to cover, but I'm going to try to stay on topic. But um, when I decided that I wanted to listen to Christian rappers so I wouldn't have to listen to the rap of the world, it was very difficult because the Christian rappers were sounding like the people of the world. And all they did was make me think like, you're be not being authentic. I don't want to listen to a copycat. I'd rather go listen to who I was listening to. At least I'd be listening from directly from them and they are identically themselves. I did have to learn that over the years that some people just sound like other people. It's like singers. Some singers sound like other singers. But when you have gospel people or gospel artists, whether they're Christian, rap, traditional, contemporary, sounding so much like the world, then what's the difference? If they sounding so much like the world to the point that you can't even separate the world from your gospel, then how is it gospel? And what is the difference? All the mixing that the songs did was made me, it made me want to go listen to that original song. When you hear, when I hear gospel artists take a popular R&B song, whether it's in the present or back in the day, it either makes me want to turn them off completely because I don't think that should have been turned into a gospel song 
or it makes me be like, you know what? The original song was better. So yeah, I'm gonna listen to you and I'm gonna hop and I'm gonna praise. But at the same time, I'm gonna go back and listen to the other song because I like that better. That's what I grew up on. That's what I wanted to hear. And I don't understand why gospel artists are so focused on changing gospel song, mixing gospel songs with R&B. Because again, it pulls the other crowd that pulls the money from the other crowd as well but it's not even authentic it's like when is gospel artists gonna go back to being gospel artists with authentic songs it's even getting to the point that most gospel artists are literally just pulling other gospel artist songs and they sounding good when they do it there's no offense to that but it's like are our people in the gospel industry not capable of producing enough gospel that they have to reform to doing gospel that is not even what that is. Um, I'm not encouraging anybody to listen to R&B. This is not a, it's not, oh, okay, what's the difference? There is no difference. So I can listen to any music I want to listen to. That's your choice. It's whatever is laid on your heart. That's what you have to do for Christ, not for Miss Nisi, <laughs> for Christ. Um, and there's a gospel song out there I, I, there is a gospel song out there that is so worldly and the original song is so worldly and it's rough it starts off with a lot of cursing and all that and it's made into a gospel song and i'm like nope no nope. i don't even want to hear that on the worldly side why would I want to hear that in a gospel song? Some things just can't be interchanged. Some things can't be collided or put together. And before you even start thinking it, what song could that be? It is not the Beyonce Clark sister song. It is a gentleman who came out with a song from R&B world. And when I hear that first beat, I know who it is originally and I immediately turn it off. And I kind of get upset because I'm like, there should be a, some limits and standards to what is being remade and what is being used to say that I am trying to reach the other side. And many of the sad realities of this is that if you're going to try to be a successful singer and you want to stick to what real gospel is considered to be, um, sometimes they miss out on the success of gospel and they miss out on the recognition and the awards that should they should be getting because there's others willing to conform and make changes to the point where it's not even gospel anymore have you noticed that we're never on any more r&b platforms when it comes to gospel music it's very 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 rare if on occasion that you will see a gospel person on an r&b platform like it was back in the day because we sound so much like them now why do they need us and not me as a gospel artist i don't sing but the gospel sounds so much like them now why do they need us and do you notice that our own gospel awards it's it's almost like watching bt hip-hop or the vmas it's like i'm not saying that all this new stuff is bad i'm just saying that it dilutes what the word is supposed to be i'm not the one who is like don't be dancing don't be doing this i think if that's form of entertainment is what is going to make you feel young people is going to draw to the lord then you do what God is leading you to do as a gospel artist. But there is more worldly dancing on stage than praise breaks. And I'm like, wow, there was a time where they'll cut you off if they thought you was going to do a praise break on your own stellar holy award shows. But now you can come out there dancing and pop locking and doing the latest TikTok trends. And to say it's for the young people, it's not for the young people because young people ain't listening to you. They listening to the real music. They may be listening to you as an alternative to say, yeah, because you are part of this group. But I wish people would wake up and realize that the very things that you're thinking you're trying to reach the young people on is definitely not reaching them because they're not. I can only speak from my experiences and even being around young people as a youth pastor back in the day. Young people gonna listen to what they wanna listen to. If you're a gospel artist and you sound good, they gonna listen to you. And if you sound good and you're not doing hip hop and 
all that other extra stuff to or being pop or acting like you R and B, let me let me tell you, they will still listen to you. People who like music, who like the sound, will listen to the music and the sound. But the thing about gospel music is supposed to be the music and sound that's supposed to draw you to Christ, not make you want to go listen to that R and B song in its original form and not make you feel like question like what are you doing this is not gospel and i think it's getting to a point where people are now saying well r&b music is dying out uh it looks like gospel music is too a lot of our gospel artists who are staying true to form is giving enough gospel for us to worship and praise on but at the same time it's like the push isn't for what they call traditional gospel anymore. The push is to sound so much like the world that we're going to continue to allow the excuse of young people or to help older people to accept a gospel song in that form as an excuse. And it's taken away the true meaning of what gospel music is. So our, you know, what's the difference? Our R&B music and Christian music is alike. Yeah, they're almost identical at this point. If you could literally take a song, let's just say that one lady song, you literally can listen to it. And even though it has some gospel, an old go- old school gospel beat in the background, it was no different than my daughter said this group called Seven. They thought that's who it was. But then you can hear Marvin Sapp say never would have made it. And everybody instantly know from the sound and from how he is singing that he is talking about Christ. And he never says Jesus. He never says Lord. But everybody instantly knows because the delivery is different. The approach is different. The, the, the push and actually the power behind that song is different than how gospel r&b which is basically what it is is being played today so i'm gonna leave you with this scripture and it's ephesians 5 19 it's king james version saying speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord so i guess the question would be do you think gospel music will get worse before it get better uh, do you think it's already at its worst and what do you consider to be a spiritual song to the lord that's a good question um but how do you keep gospel music going for you what do you think gospel music is i hope you enjoy today's wake up christian um we have to be careful that we don't go too far into what it is that we're supposed to be doing for christ and it's sad because we don't always we shouldn't always put the weight of the world on these entertainers because we have a responsibility for ourselves. But nowadays, Mahalia Jackson and Shirley Caesar and those people who are old school that we say, oh, they were too old for us to listen to seems to be more encouraging for our gospel music. It seems to be the throwback that I really need sometimes to do my worship. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of them out there that are really you got CC Winans, you got Dion Kipping, uh, you got a lot of gospel artists who are able to provide the worship, provide the praise, and still do what is needed in order to stay relevant to a world who would not even turn the gospel station on or would not even go to a church to hear a gospel song, nonetheless, just go to a church. But for those gospel artists, you have to be very careful that the sound that you are presenting, that you're saying you're ministering to the souls is actually ministering to the souls. If you're a gospel artist and nobody can even recognize that your songs are even gospel, you might not, you might need to start, you know, rewriting them differently or throw a little Jesus or almighty God or say heaven or something, uh, help, help out. (laughs) Help out the Christian community for real and be a representation of Christ in your music so it won't be so that people are just singing your song and you just getting paid because you have a bunch of fans who don't even really know that you're representing Christ. 
And that's all I have to say on that. Um, thank you again for listening. Feel free to reach out to me at realtalkministry20 at gmail.com. You can visit my Facebook, uh, Real Talk Ministry. You can also visit my website, realtalkministry.com. Thank you for listening and God bless.